We've talked about some of the capabilities of using cross-sections and the usefulness for um, uh, some modelling effectively and taking a, a, a 2D cross-section uh, implicitly into a, a 3D analysis. And in Design Modeler, it's important to know some of the creation and editing preferences in order to define your cross-section correctly. And we'll talk about that in the next few slides. So in Design Modeler, the cross-section cross lies in the XY plane. And you can see that um, as detailed here in, in the XY plane. So this is the default plane in which the cross section is defined. Uh, the alignment is um, defined by a local or cross section um, positive Y direction. But we can start to look at some of the alignments in order to make sure it's aligned correctly in some of the later operations. It's important to note that as far as ANSYS Classic is concerned, the cross section lies in the YZ plane and uses in the X direction for the tangency. Uh, but the orientation should have no bearing as far as the analysis is concerned as long as we ensure that the cross-section is defined and oriented um, or aligned correctly. Uh, there's a colour coding convention which is used to indicate the status of the cross-section for line bodies. So if you see that your line body takes on a, a violet colour, that indicates that no cross-section has been assigned to that line body. If it's black, a cross-section has been assigned and there's a valid alignment. If it's red, the cross-section is assigned, but the, there is an invalid alignment and the alignment of the cross-section needs some attention. The line body icons are also, uh, there's also a reflection in the tree structure for, for the line bodies under the parts and body tree. You can see here that they have a small icon that's listed next to the line body icon to indicate the status. Um, so green tick here indicates that the cross-section is aligned with a valid cross-section alignment. Uh, the yellow tick at the top um, indicates um, that there's no cross-section alignment or there's a, a default alignment assigned to that line body. And the red one shown in the centre indicates that there's an invalid cross-section alignment and so we need to take some uh, care and attention into correctly um, defining the alignment. We, we can check that the um, cross-section has been aligned correctly in a, a couple of different ways. Uh, we can go to um, view and cross-section alignment or cross-section cross -section solids. If we opt for cross-section alignments, we can see here uh, vector arrows, um, a green arrow, in this case it's positive Y, and a blue arrow showing the edge tangent of the cross-section in order to ensure that the, um, the cross-section has been correctly aligned. The other option is to um, opt for cross-section solids, but we can actually display the um, cross-section in, in a, like a 3D uh, model mode and we can see the, um, how, how this body lies relative to the original line body which is shown in the blue in the centre here. So we can use either of these methods in order to check that the um, cross-section has been aligned correctly. <coughs> now it's possible that the um, cross-section hasn't been aligned um, correctly by default so we're going to have to go in and make some modifications in order to ensure that it's been aligned correctly. And there are two methods for modifying the cross-section alignment and these are by um, selection and also by vector. And you can see on the left hand side and the right hand side the respective um, options available uh, for selection and vector as methods for um, alignment of the cross section. So the selection method um, uses existing geometry as the uh, reference for alignment so we can select a geometry and use that in order to align the particular cross section. Um, the other option on the vector is to explicitly assign the vector uh, to be used for, for alignment. So you can see on the left hand side, it, by selection, the alignment x, y, z uh, values to input the vector field are then greyed out. Uh, whereas on the right hand side, once we drop down to vector, that then gives us access to the um, x, y, z um, components in order to define that vector for alignment of the field. In both cases, we can define a rotation angle and a reverse orientation if we want to make some adjustments to the previous um, selection or vector method for um, cross-section alignment. So to access the alignment mode we click on the line by the tree, right mouse button in the viewer and select all and then the alignment mode details will then show up as shown in this slide. We can make some modifications to the um, cross-section um, vector for alignment. So here we can see the vector option has been listed and here we can see the, um, the vector used for the alignment of the cross section, in this case 0, 1, 0, and you have no rotation and uh, no, no reverse orientation. 
software. Here we have our, our vector which is displayed in the um, graphical interface. If we want to make a modification to that, we can simply, in the, as shown in this case, we can change the rotate angle here by 30 degrees. So that it will take the original vector of 0, 1, 0, rotate it by 30 degrees. If we want to flip it the other way, we can switch the reverse orientation to yes. Um, but as you can see, um, between the two um, screen grabs here, we've, we've moved this um, vector over from, um, from moving up and to the right to up and to the left, and it's moved over by 30 degrees. So it allows us some finer and more arbitrary level of adjustment for the alignment vector for the cross-section. We can also uh, modify cross-section orientation by selection. So we can select the line body um, to be the subject of the uh, alignment modification in the graphics window. This is shown here. We're selecting this uh, line body here. The alignment mode is selection. And then uh, once we've um, selected uh, Selection as, selection as a selection method for alignment field, we can then select the geometry um, as the reference geometry for the alignment to be corrected to. We can also um, create the alignment using lines or axes as well. So we, here we can choose the axis for alignment, as can be shown here, in order to orient the um, alignment of the uh, cross-section correctly. And here on the right hand side we can, show, we can see the line is chosen here um, for the alignment of the, um, of the cross section for the pre previous line body. So these are just alternative ways of making sure that the cross sections are aligned correctly. In addition to um, lines and axes we can also use face normals. And here's um, an example where we have our channel cross section. That's shown at the top and also below in a slightly different position. And that is by virtue of the different face normals that we've selected. So we've selected different faces are on an adjacent solid here, one at the side and one at the top. They obviously have 90 degree different um, face normals. And we can use these face normals in order to provide a vector for realignment um, of the, uh, the cross-section. In addition to those, we can also use sketch points. Using two sketch points, we're effectively creating a new vector by virtue of the, uh, of the, of the angle and positioning between, uh, between the two of them. And we can use that vector to then, call, to then uh, infer a new alignment of the cross-section. And that can, be, that can be seen here with these points 1 and 2, which are the two um, sketch points that have been selected, and the line body that's going to be affected. So we can reorient and, and align the cross-section correctly. In addition to the uh, alignment, we can also um, create the cross-section or edit the cross-section um, offset. And that can be done in a number of different ways. Um, by centroid, shear center, origin, and there's also a user-defined tool. And these are different ways of making sure that the um, lateral displacement offset for, for the um, cross-section is then edited so that, so that is also correct in addition to the um, alignment. And there's an example in the following slide which shows the effect of um, the cross-section offset. So here we can see this um, eye section beam on the left-hand side with a line body um, in the center which represents the, um, the center for the, um, the cross-section. So the origin offset with no offset, we can see the line body is placed at the bottom of the cross-section. Um, but we can opt, opt for a centroid or shear center offset which lifts the cross-section so that it then coincides the centroid shear center offset for the cross-section then coincides with the, um, the vector for the, for the line body itself and it basically shifts it up um, so we have, uh, we, we've offset it correctly.